Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday to you. It's time for our weekly chat. We call it Coffee with PC. That's because I always bring my cup of coffee and I've got something surprising in the cup today. It's actually instant coffee. Yes, I know. You, <laughs> I've said for a long time, instant coffee is horrible, but we bought uh, this instant espresso, Cuban coffee, Bustelo, uh, for a cake Denise made a couple weeks ago and uh, put it in the cake. Obviously a chocolate cake with a little coffee in it is a good thing. And, and I just decided this morning, hey, I, I want to try it. And it's actually pretty doggone good, I must say. It's obviously not as good as if I went across the street and got a, a fresh shot over there. But for uh, instant coffee, one of the better ones and certainly a good pick-me-up for this morning. I hope your morning is off to a good start. And if you're like most of us over these last few days, we've been keeping our eyes on uh, Hurricane Idalia now as that storm is moving its way closer and closer, it seems like, toward landfall. Uh, obviously, we're very familiar with that in the Keys. We have had our fair share. Uh, typically, the way we stick out there is always an issue. And I know some of the lower keys, particularly yesterday, got some pretty rough weather, and we've had a little bit of that to ourselves, but not anything like what is awaiting those in this storm's path. And, and again, it's an eye storm. Of course, our most recent hurricane in the keys that did a lot of damage was I, uh, Irma, a few years back, and then last year, Ian on the West Coast, and now Idalia. Eye storms in Florida seem to, to not be a good combination. Um, so obviously want to be uh, watching that, want to be praying for those who are in its path. Of course, we know hopefully a lot of them that are in its path have gotten out of the way, have have done the preparations that are needed and have boarded up the house and, and, and gotten to a place that's a lot safer than being in the path of the storm. Because, you know, we know it's unpredictable, not just the wind, uh, but the, the water, the storm surge, the flooding, all of that stuff, uh, the lack of power, as trees and other damage happens, just a lot that's gonna happen. And, and one of the cool things, and the reason I bring it up is, is first of all, uh, let's, let's be praying for those who will be affected by this storm um, as it moves on land and then across. And then again, it looks like out to, to the ocean, out to the Atlantic shortly after that. Um, but also to remind you that we are part of one of the uh, key disaster relief organizations when these sorts of things happen. Uh, we are a part of the Southern Baptist Convention and our disaster relief uh, teams do an incredible job when there are disasters like this. And so I know already there are disaster relief teams just waiting for the word for, for things to get safe enough so that they can move in. They'll move in with, with feeding stations. Um, if you've never seen uh, one of those mobile feeding unit, it is remarkable the number of meals they can crank out of one of those. You know, thousands a day of meals they're able to do um, when there's these disasters and people need to be fed. Um, they'll bring in clean, cleanup crews, chainsaw crews, muck out crews, whatever it's taken. There'll be groups that are trained specifically for that. You can tell, by the way, our um, Baptist disaster relief folks because they're the ones in the yellow. They usually have a yellow jacket or shirt. Um, that's kind of the defining mark of them. And, and maybe you don't know this, but but here's something to, to know. For instance, we have in our state convention, our Florida Baptist Convention, a disaster relief coordinator. Um, David Coggins is that individual for us. And he is in the room, as they say, in Tallahassee when these things are happening. He is right there with the key uh, government agencies and leaders that are around the table, monitoring the progress of the storm, coordinating resources. So as soon as they're able to get to the people that have been affected by the storm, he, he's in the room. He's in contact not just with Florida Baptist disaster relief, but but all over the southeast, really. And that's that's the, the, the beauty of, of our uh, nation wide convention. It won't just be Florida groups, but when we had Irma down here, the biggest unit was a North Carolina feeding unit. We had a lot of places, a lot of Baptists from other places come in, and that's going to happen. You're going to probably see it in, in the initial uh, coverage of that. If you see recovery efforts happen, look for those yellow shirts and know that those are some of our folks. Those are, those are regular everyday lay church people who, who do need some training. You, there is some required training you have to have to be on a disaster relief team, and it, it's specific. You sign up 
and you take the training based upon the team you want to be on. So the training for the chainsaw crew is different than the muck out crew and, and, and is different from the feeding crew. So you, you kind of get on that. And then you're, you, as you're available and as disasters happen, th- those are everyday ordinary people. So like us here in our church on Sunday, if you looked around, there, the people that will be on the front lines of disaster relief are, some, are people just like you and I that, that give up their time freely to help people in need. It's really a remarkable thing. And, and the reason they do it certainly is because there is a great need um, for practical help. But, but out of all of these disaster relief times, they, they get an opportunity to share the hope that they have in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, so that's going to that's gonna be happening as people go and do something very practical, like here is a meal, or I'm coming with my chainsaw to help you with the, the trees and debris, or, or I'm coming with a crew to, to help with the, the water that got in your house and to get all the muck and to, to, to clean up and demold and all the stuff that has to happen. They're going to also build relationships and get a chance to share in the midst of tragedy the hope that we can have in Jesus. So, so I say that um, to say a lot of people ask me when things like this happen, what can we do to help? One thing you can do is to, if you want to, to volunteer to get trained as a disaster relief volunteer. And then if you're able, when the time comes, you can be sent to regions like what will be happening over the next few days after a storm goes through, after tornadoes, after fires, all of those things um, disaster relief units go to. Uh, or if you want to support that effort and you, you're not able because obviously, you know, these people are able to go. They take maybe a week or two of their time and, and go to a place away from home. If you're not able to do that, um, if you'd like to donate, we always forward any disaster relief donations. If somebody made a donation to our church for Hurricane uh, Idalia Relief, we're going to send it straight to our Florida Baptist Disaster Relief Unit. And that money will go to them to buy the food, to buy the things that they need, to provide the things that they need for those affected by this storm. So that's just a few brief moments. Obviously, whenever you see something like that, it is kind of front and center on your mind because you know we're not that far removed and we don't know the hurricane season is not over. It's sort of heated up in the last uh, week or two. And so we might be uh, in, still in the, in the path potentially of another storm. But for those folks today that are, that are gonna be dealing with this and over the next days and weeks, um, Think about them, pray for them. We're gonna do that together in just a minute. But then also, if you wanna help, uh, we would encourage you, you can, you can, if you make a donation to our church, we'll forward it, or you can go straight to the Florida Baptist Convention website or the Send Relief website. That's our mission agency, Send Relief. I don't know if it's .com or .org, but I'm sure if you type in Send Relief, you'd see the North American Mission Board uh, relief efforts there, all of those places. If you want to help, that's something you can do. And if you want to be trained, you can't go, you can go as a day volunteer. It's a little far from us. It looks like where this is going to be necessarily. But if you want to get trained, um, we'd love to, I've said all along, we need to get that because we we have opportunities even in our own neighborhood at times to help in in those sorts of situations. So let's just finish up today. Let's pray uh, right now for just a few minutes, obviously for those that are going to be impacted by this and are being impacted by this and for the, the recovery efforts that will begin. So let's pray together real quick. Father, I thank you that you hear us when we pray and you answer when we call. And certainly our thoughts today, our minds are on those who are being and will be affected by Hurricane Idalia as it makes its way across the state and on up through the areas it's forecast to go through. Um, Lord, having many of us been on the the end of, of the devastation of a storm, we know what, what some of these folks are going to face. And, and Lord, I guess one huge prayer is, is just for no loss of life, that those who are there have, have taken the right precautions, have prepared and have evacuated, uh, and Lord, that you'll protect um, their lives above all else. And Lord, I know that there's always cleanup, there's always uh, kind of fallout that has to be dealt with, and I pray for for that process too. It can be a long process and certainly a, an exhausting process. I thank you for disaster relief volunteers who are already uh, getting ready, already staging to go in. I pray that you'll use them practically to meet the needs of the people impacted by this storm, but also use them to share the hope that we have in a God who loves us and sent his son Jesus. So we pray all of these things and we keep our thoughts with those folks in the path of this storm. May you protect And may you bless, and in the aftermath, may you provide for their needs, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, thanks again. Always appreciate you spending a few minutes.
for with me. I'm going to put some links to, to those disaster relief places if you'd like to give um, to on this, whether it's Facebook or on our websites. So you just know you can just click right there and, and, and learn more about how you can. So if you want to support financially disaster relief, so that'll be available for you. And uh, certainly invite you to keep praying um, as we watch this. I uh, hope you have a great rest of your week. And uh, it seems kind of counterproductive after kind of such a somber topic that we're realizing today. Uh, but we're going to be here on Sunday. We'll be worshiping together, continuing in the book of Hebrews, 9 a.m. Love to have you join us. Um, we'll be certainly in person here in the, in the church where I'm at now, but also we'll stream it through our website and online. So if you can join us, we'd be grateful. Hopefully it'll be an encouragement to you. And hopefully you'll be an encouragement to somebody else this week. So I'll leave that with you. Hope you have a great rest of your week and we'll talk soon. Thanks.